right now. This morning we're getting a look at two suspects accusing the shooting death of a man on San Antonio's northeast side. What SAPD is revealing so far about their investigation. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. President Biden announcing new sanctions against Russia and new aid to Ukraine. How the world is commemorating this one year anniversary of Russia's invasion. The details coming up. And let's look out there with live cam. We're starting cold this morning at 58 degrees. Uh, and things won't warm up today like they had been the rest of the week. All week we've been saying most days, you don't need a jacket today. You don't need a jacket today. Well, guess what? Here it is Friday. It is February 24th. And yes, you might need a jacket again. Yeah, at least a light sweater or something. Mm -hmm. It's breezy out there too. Mike Osterhage, it looks like we had a little front come through. Yep. And we'll get this monitor turned on here over on camera yeah, three here. We can't see ourselves. <laughs> yeah. so. like, there we see ourselves up there, not down there. We need anyway. both. Yeah, we, we had the front move through yesterday. It cleared out in the hill country. Now not necessarily here in town. We did make it up uh, to 80 again yesterday. And then what's interesting is the low temperature this morning is not that much different than yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's much drier and yeah, windy conditions. Then temperatures really aren't going anywhere except kind of heading downward. And we've already dropped down a couple of notches uh, just in the past few hours. So we've got a lot of clouds out there. Forget about seeing sunshine today. 59 here in town, mid 50s hill country. Still a couple of low 60s there over around uh, Hondo, Divine, Pleasanton, Stinson. And these numbers have dropped significantly. Dew point temperatures in a couple of spots still got a little bit of humidity hanging around here. But for the most part, in behind this front, things did definitely uh, drop down and throughout the rest of the day. It is also going to be kind of breezy. We've got winds out of the northeast 10 15 miles per hour. A couple of gusts out there 18 at Randolph 14 there at Bolverde as well as Lost Maples uh, allergens mold and ash did drop down from the previous day's reading, but we still have just that list out there and I know a lot of folks are still sneezing and sniffling and everything else and this morning. Yeah, light jacket's not a bad idea. It's that coolish and just not cold, but coolish enough and 60 upper 50s. I may adjust these numbers a little bit as we continue to just slowly creep downward. Then we're only going to be mid 50s by later on this afternoon. A little breeze out there. A couple of sprinkles can't be ruled out either. Not any significant rain, but just don't be surprised if there is a sprinkle out there. And yeah, still a breeze 55 grilled cheese and soup sounds pretty good for dinner tonight and uh, We'll see what happens tomorrow because it's not going to look much better. Maybe a tad warmer than that. The rest of the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, two suspects are under arrest for their involvement in the shooting death in northeast Bear County last week. That's according to Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Now, last Thursday, 32-year-old Daniel Varadetes Fernandez was killed in the 7,000 block of Winsford Drive. 24-year-old Adiz Fernandez Rivas is accused of pulling out a handgun and shooting Valadez Fernandez. Now, 31-year-old Marco Moreno Vasquez was identified as the other suspect at the scene. Salazar says both are charged with murder. He says the two suspects accused of his murder got away after the argument escalated into a shooting. Deputies found Valadez Fernandez with a gunshot wound to the upper body. Salazar said they tried to save his life, but he died at the scene. Deputies also recovered two weapons, one of which is believed to be the murder weapon. Today marks one year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Since then, an estimated 200,000 Russian troops have either been killed or wounded. As ABC's NWIN reports, the brutal battle continues as President Biden declares new sanctions against Russia this morning. This morning, the world marking one year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. From New York to parts of Europe to Australia, people gathered in support of the war-torn country. There, President Zelensky also attending a ceremony to commemorate the anniversary as the bloody battle rages on with Ukrainian troops fiercely resisting Russian forces, now struggling to make progress in the east. Zelensky vowing to rebuild, tweeting overnight that Ukrainians had proven themselves to be invincible in what he called a year of pain, sorrow, faith and unity, adding victory will come. And this morning, President Biden announcing a new $2 billion military aid package to Ukraine, which includes additional artillery rounds, military drones, more funding for training, and more missiles for the HIMARS system. 
The White House also announcing new sanctions on over 200 people and companies in Russia, as well as Chinese companies accused of evading sanctions on Russia. It comes as China released a peace plan calling for a ceasefire without more specifics. Still, the U.S. is concerned they may provide lethal military aid to Russia. I'm hopeful, but in a very clear-eyed way, that China will get that message because it's not only coming from us, it's coming from many other countries. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is expected to address the U.N. Security Council this morning, denouncing Russia's aggression against Ukraine. It comes a day after the U.N. adopted a non-binding resolution calling for Russia to end its war. And when? ABC News, Washington. A coast-to-coast -coast storm that paralyzed roads and blacked out nearly one million homes and businesses is set to pound California, sparking warnings about floods and blizzards. The National Weather Service says the storm could dump as much as five feet of snow in some Southern California mountains. That could bring wide out conditions and an increased risk of avalanches. Several rare blizzard warnings are now in place further north. Portions of I-80 in California and Wyoming have already been closed because of impassable conditions, including a 70 mile stretch over the Sierra Nevada. Snow, ice and freezing rain are also expected to keep hitting areas of the Plain States and northern areas, including New England. Governor Greg Abbott is now assigning a task force to address street takeovers following a weekend of chaos and destruction in Austin. In a statement, Governor Abbott says the task force will work closely with state local officials and law enforcement to investigate, prosecute, and prevent these incidents from happening. He also criticized what he called foolish attempts to implement police oversight like Austin has been working toward. Earlier this week, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says he saw the Austin video on Twitter and got in contact with Chief McManus to make sure the same would not happen in our city. Two West Virginia brothers who brought baseball bats to the January 6th Capitol riots were sentenced in court Thursday. 43-year-old Eric Kramer pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct and was sentenced to eight months in prison. Prosecutors say Kramer grabbed a baton from a police officer during the riot, later posted a photo of the police baton on Facebook calling it a trophy. A classmate of his daughter tipped off Capitol Police after seeing a post she made bragging about her father's actions. His brother, 38-year-old Country Kramer, was sentenced to 45 days of home detention after pleading guilty to unlawfully parading or picketing. Time now, 437 and 58 degrees for now. Not a good night for the Spurs last night in Dallas. We'll show you what went wrong for the team as they face Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. And it was a big night for five rodeo cowboys during San Antonio's talk show and rodeo. We're going to show you which one took home the ride of the night. Checking traffic right now, and you never know what you're going to get this time of morning. Could be construction, could be an accent, or just uh, somebody getting a ticket. But right now, things look pretty good around town. You're looking live at I-37 and Hackberry. And let's look out there with live cam. Starting cool at 58 degrees. Not really expecting to see the sun today, but things should be different this weekend. We're going to be checking in with Mike very soon. During layup line, I did see a couple of the Mavs players as they started to make a move toward the basket. They would look down at the floor like their feet were slipping. And so obviously it's concerning. Because, uh, All right, no explanation, but the Spurs Mavs game was delayed because of condensation on the court at the American Airlines Center due to the Dallas Stars ice rink under the basketball floor on game day. All right, well, now that makes sense. The wet court caused the Mavs and uh, Spurs to tip at 8 o'clock last night. First quarter, Spurs on the run. Devontae Graham to Zach Collins for the layup and Spurs lead 19-18. Then Keldon fakes a three feet to Bassey for the slam dunk. But Dallas led 34-26 after one. San Antonio trailed 74-63 at the halftime. Third quarter, Blake Wesley throws the inbounds to off the shoulder of Luka Doncic. Goes baseline for a slam dunk. Very smart play from the Rook. And that's as good as it got for our Spurs. They fall 142-116, losing their 15th straight. Uh, Branham led the Spurs with 23 points. Spurs continue their rodeo road trip tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, at the Utah Jazz. In boys basketball for high school, Steel Knights have one of the best rebounders in the area for Javon Tolliver, the junior forward playing in his third varsity season. He recently broke the school record for rebounds in a single season with 331. The record previously held by Gerald Liddell who grabbed 294 boards in 2016. Javon's dad told us that the record is special to Tolliver and he takes pride in playing his role on the team. How does he feel about setting a school record? I'm just playing the game, doing what I got to do. I just really want to win, so 
if rebounding helps our team win, then that's what I'm gonna do. That's pretty special. I mean, Javon, he does everything for us. He's like the the glue to our team. You know, having him really helps us a lot. He's got another year left. You know, I know people don't want to hear that, but he's only a junior. You know, but no, great kid. He just works so hard. He's real important for our team, man. He helps us half our half our shots are just for us to get it. He'll get the rebound. He'll get fouled. Get his and one. Um, he's real special down there. Tolliver and the Steel Knights will face Stony Point, round two of the Class 6A playoffs tomorrow night, 7 o'clock at Lehman High School. All right, Steph, here we go. Five of ten Cowboys went the distance last night at the Stock Show and Rodeo. Ernie Corson Jr. lasted about three seconds before he reigns, bucks him off, and takes Ernie, takes a spin on the Bulls' back before he gets away. That was close. Here's Trey Holston going round and round on board the Bull, Lil Bill. And Holston breaks off the second best ride of the night. Eight seconds, 86 points. Now cue up the high score of the night. Kai John Hamilton testing his skills on board the bull. DJ Casper and Hamilton making it look easy. He wins last night's round with an 86.5. That's a look at bull riding from the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo last night. You're right. He did make it look easy. Mm -hmm. We know it's not. <laughs> Time now, 443 and 58 degrees for now. An accident involving a Clydesdale horses at the rodeo this weekend gave the audience a scare. We're going to find the key to untangling this mess of leather and one-ton horses next. How the horse handlers struggled with a 15-minute ordeal that kept the animals calm. Oh, no. The crowds at the San Antonio Rodeo last night saw something rare and truly alarming, an accident involving the world-famous Budweiser Clydesdales. Videos of the performance mishap have gone viral with millions of views. Our Ursula Perry sorts out what happened with an expert and why that expert was impressed with the outcome. They're magnificent, specially bred, gentle giants of the show ring who spend their whole lives in training for this moment. They offer a glimpse into the strength of teamwork and throw a spotlight on one of nature's most beautiful animals. But Saturday night, a different kind of show. Uh-oh, that's not supposed to happen. A tangle of reins and harnesses with horse flesh multiplied by eight, creating an emergency that seemed dangerous, if not deadly, to these horses. Then about 10 minutes later, it's over. The downed horse is unharnessed and managed to get up, then walked off as if nothing had happened. It was scary. Expert trainer and team driver with almost 50 years of experience, Ann Van Dyke, was also impressed. There are four rows of 2,000 pound plus draft horses wrapped and trapped in a tremendous amount of leather. And then to unstrap each of the, so each of the collars have have traces which attach to the double trees which attach to the next one. I mean, it was amazing that they could get all of that done safely like that in the short amount of time that they did because that was a mess. Her observations coming from the fast actions of the driver as well as an immediate army of Anheuser-Busch staff who jumped into action in the arena. Through it all, the horses remained calm and so did the trainers which is likely why no one was hurt, not even the horse on the ground. He laid there quietly, tried to get up, laid there quietly, and he was, he was just as quiet and as well-trained as the rest of them. That was our Ursula Perry reporting. Look out there with Trans Guy. Didn't seem like there were too many problems earlier. Here's a look at Loop 1604 and this one, Loop 1604, Pat Booker Road. Kind of quiet this Friday morning. It is. I remember uh, Battle Flowers Parade mm -hmm. years and years ago when I was down on the street and reporting from there, and somebody had drawn the the uh, metal in chalk on the pavement right there. And what was interesting is all the horses that came by were like, whoa, what? What is that? Spooked even them. Yeah. even the Clydesdales, mm -hmm. and here they are, and they're like, oh, you know, what what's going on here? So it's interesting how easily they can kind of maybe get a little spooked by something, mm -hmm. something amiss. So you have to be careful. Yeah. So all right, it is. It, it's funny. We're still well above normal this morning, but it does feel cooler. It's drier, a little yeah. breezy out there, and stay like this all day long. So what's on the menu tonight? All together.
Uh, grilled cheese and soup. Thank Thanks you very much. Together. Beautiful end of the day yesterday. We did keep a lot of clouds around here. And yeah, we did make it up uh, to 80 again yesterday. And then things started to dry out. It cleared out pretty nicely in parts of the hill country, though. But we kept a lot of clouds, like I said, here in town. Over there by the uh, airport, as you can see, things are moving along very well. We don't have anything being picked up. We got really dry air in place. So there's no fog. There's no mist, anything like that. But there may be a couple of sprinkles then throughout the course of the day. So right now, just about everybody with a couple of exceptions in the 50s. We've actually dropped a degree or two at the airport just in the past uh, couple of hours, and it looks like right there almost along the escarpment there wants to be some leftover moisture, but everybody else, the dew points have dropped down fairly significantly. Significantly, as a matter of fact, we've dropped down 23 degrees just compared to this time yesterday. New Braunfels almost 30 degrees lower. Same thing, Austin, as far as the drier air that has moved on in here. We've got a decent wind out of the northeast 10 15 miles per hour couple of gusts out there it's not going to be overly windy today but just enough also given the fact that temperatures aren't really going anyway anywhere except down a little bit and i've got us at 60 right now upper 50 60 and then throughout the rest of the afternoon we make that slow decline 20 percent chance for a sprinkle maybe that basically just don't be surprised if there is a little bit of a sprinkle here or there later on today and we're going to be at 55 by later on this afternoon with an okay breeze uh, 10 20 mile per hour winds out there here's the computer model not only does it keep a lot of clouds around but once again a couple little spots are going to be possible I mean, it's just not anything significant, but again, don't be surprised if there is a sprinkle or two out there. So a lot of moisture still continues to get pumped in here from the southwest, and this is pretty much associated with that huge low, which is coming in here, and that southwesterly flow out ahead of it, that huge low, the one that is producing those blizzard conditions in the mountains of California. All of that along with those temperatures that are just ridiculously cold once again up to the north. All that's going to stay up to the north. Look at the fine line right here. 25 Oklahoma City, 44 Dallas. Now we're right below that and again all that stays up there to the north because there's nothing pushing it down in our direction. So the forecast today again cloudy all day temperatures make a slow decline steady slow decline this morning. A sprinkle or two here or there a breeze as well 55 later on this afternoon. So that's going to be about it. Then tomorrow we get down to 44 45 pardon me and uh, you know, a couple of sprinkles in the morning, then some fog perhaps on Sundays. The humidity tries to work its way back on in here again. A sprinkler two tomorrow, maybe crack the low 60s. It'll be tough with those clouds. And then another front moves through here Sunday night into Monday. And yeah, once again, like the one earlier this week, that just heats us up in behind that and a sprinkler two on Sunday. Uh, perhaps a better chance of rain late next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, question, mark, still, question mark, question mark, right. question mark. Yeah, still, it's still a week away. A lot can change by then. But as of right now, that's the only decent chance of rain, what it's looking like. So that would be good. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Thank you, Mike. 452, 58 degrees. And more Lord of the Rings movies could soon be on the way. Up next, we're going to tell you when. Plus, a look at where Cocaine Bear is expected to end up this weekend at the box office. Cocaine Bear officially arrives in theaters. Plus, get ready for more Lord of the Rings movies. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Beth, we should go. Let the rampage begin. Cocaine Bear is in theaters this weekend. The darkly comedic, bloody, true-ish tale of a bear who finds a package of cocaine in the woods and goes nuts. Carrie Russell, among the film's stars, telling me trying to pretend a CGI bear was attacking her and her friends was kind of nuts. Often, it was us in the woods with Liz screaming on a megaphone going, Okay, now he's eating his face off. There's blood dripping all down his body. And now he's climbing up and his leg just fell off and it's blood squirting all over. You're like, what are we doing? It's insanity. Elizabeth Banks directed Cocaine Bear. It'll likely finish second this weekend to the new Ant-Man movie. Order set. 
Warner Brothers going back to Middle Earth, announcing on its earnings call that the studios struck a deal for more Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit movies. No word yet if Peter Jackson, the visionary director behind the first two trilogies, will be involved or when we might see them. These will be separate from Amazon Prime Video's TV series. Lift me up. From the Super Bowl to the Oscars, Rihanna will perform at this year's Academy Awards, singing her Oscar-nominated song, Lift Me Up, from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. You'll see that March 12th on ABC. And it's a big week for O'Shea Jackson Jr., the actor co-starring in Cocaine Bear, and today is his birthday. He's 32. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 58 degrees. A disgraced South Carolina attorney accused of killing his wife and youngest son begins testifying in his own defense. Up next, what Alex Murdaugh is admitting to jurors. Plus, a man is in critical condition this morning after being shot twice last night, just ahead of what San Antonio police are saying about the suspect. Let's look out there with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 1604 at Marbuck Road, where things are pretty quiet this morning, but we're going to be checking in soon with Stephen Cavazos for all the details. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, Alex Murdaugh begins testifying in his own defense in his double murder trial, but he is already admitting to the jury. Back here at home outside this morning, it is breezy and cooler down to about 58 degrees. We'll talk to Mike in just a moment. Good morning, and it is Friday, the 24th of February. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week and hope maybe you're ready for those cooler temperatures. It's happening today. Let's go right to Mike Osterhage for an update. No, it's kind of funny. We keep talking about how it's cooler this morning. Yeah, compared to where we've been the past few mornings, but we're still 10, almost 15 degrees above normal should be in the upper 40s, mid to upper 40s as of right now. But it sure does feel cooler just because, first of all, that bottom number 39 is the dew point. A lot drier air moved on in here and we've got an OK breeze as well. 58 degrees now out there at the airport. So we've been dropping ever so steadily and that's going to be the situation throughout the day. Steady, you know, a degree, one degree, two degrees every few hours all the way into the afternoon hours and there'll be an OK breeze out there throughout the day, not overly windy. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot and the allergens still got just a whole grocery list of allergens out there, but at least mold and ash did drop down from the previous day's reading. All right, temperatures around the area right now, pretty consistent, still a couple of spots in the in the 60s there. Hondo, Uvalde, Divine, Stinson, everybody else now uh, upper to mid 50s and the uh, humidity dew points have dropped down significantly compared to this time time yesterday with that front that moved through late yesterday, which didn't clear us out here in town as much as expected, did clear things out very nicely in parts of the hill country. And then as expected, clouds where it wasn't cloudy have moved back on in here. We've got a northeasterly breeze, 10 close to 15 miles per hour couple of uh, gusts out there. Not again, wind is not going to be a huge factor today, but with these temperatures only in the mid 50s and cloud cover, It'll come into play, obviously cloudy, cooler, breezy this morning and then cloudy mid 50s. That's it. And some areas will be dropping low 50s and even upper 40s by late this afternoon. A couple of sprinkles are possible. Not a big deal as far as rain. Just don't be surprised if you see a sprinkle or two out there. Mist in the morning, a little sprinkle here and there stays cloudy. We'll barely crack into the low 60s. Then back to the 70s on Sunday, a couple of showers here and then and then back to the 80s after that. There may be maybe an okay rain chance though way down the road. We'll talk about that in a closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority on this Friday morning, Stephen Cavazos, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, what's hello. going on? <laughs> hey, good morning, Mike, and thanks for the introduction. 35 at Randolph. Let's get a quick look there. So if you see those flashing lights, they're actually out on the frontage road way off in the distance. Now at this time, Texas has not reported any issues out there, but uh, we do have plenty of road work taking place actually on the frontage road that's striping and barrier work and that actually should be wrapping up hopefully momentarily, but at this time there are no other issues being reported in that area. But nonetheless, we'll get our friends at Transcott on the phone and see what they're seeing out on the roadways with these cameras out there. But what we're seeing on the map is just plenty of green and of course several of those road closures that are still taking place and you can expect that to continue for quite a while. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but right now let's get to those travel times here. I 10 westbound. If you're traveling in from Seguin, we are still in the green people. 29 minutes at this hour to the Alamo City, a little more than half an hour along 87 northbound and Lavernia.
and its usual drive time for our friends down in Floresville, 28 minutes at this time. So things are looking fine here. 35 at Randolph. Again, that is on the frontage road where you see those flashing lights. I know it's not a very clear shot, but from what I'm looking at here, uh, construction seems to be the story on the roadways, at least for now. Uh, we'll continue to watch things closely and have an update on those road closures as well as weekend gas prices. That'll be coming up a little later on. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Happening right now, crews working to put out a fire at a business on the south side of San Antonio. Alyssa Cole joins us now live from Goliad and Southeast Military Drive. Alyssa, what do you know so far? Yes, good morning, Mark. Stephanie, like you mentioned, I am on the south side. Crews have been working to put this fire out for hours now. They responded just after 2 o'clock. I'm here at this shopping center, the Easy Pond. It's right outside of the HEB grocery store. A lot of you are familiar with this area. Firefighters tell us when they arrive, they arrive to heavy billows of smoke. They say it was very difficult to put the fire out because it was started outside of the building. So, of course, they had to rearrange, they had to take a different approach, and they had to go defensive. Right now, you can see the ladder being retracted back to the fire truck, but that wasn't the case just a few moments ago before this live shot. There were about three or four ladders above this building when they were taking the defensive approach, putting the water um, on top, you know, through through the top of the building so they can get that fire out at the center. Right now we are waiting for the chief to come and speak to us to give us more details about how this fire started, if it was intentional, if there's any case for arson or anything of that nature. As soon as we get more details, of course, we'll be sure to update you in our later half hour of the show. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Alyssa. This morning, San Antonio police say the search is on for a person involved in a shooting that happened last night. This happened in front of a service loan place on Fredericksburg Road. Police tell us two men inside a vehicle pulled up and began arguing with a man sitting outside the building. Then things escalated when someone started shooting. The man who was shot was hit twice. He's now in the hospital where he is listed in critical condition. A reminder, today's the last day to apply for the San Antonio City Council District 7 vacancy. Former Councilwoman Anna Sandoval stepped down from the office last month. If you want to apply, you must meet eligibility requirements. The deadline is today at noon. Applications will be accepted in person at the City Clerk's Office. The interim council member will be chosen by council early next month. You can find information on how to apply right now at ksat.com. Now to the Alex Murdaugh trial. The judge has rejected, rejected rather, a request from the defense to interrupt Murdaugh's cross-examination after some emotional moments on the witness stand. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has more. The defendant, Richard Alexander Murdoch, wishes to take the stand. Before a hushed courtroom, accused double murderer Alec Murdoch taking the stand in his own defense, immediately denying he killed his wife and son. Did you take this gun or any gun like it? and blow your son's brains out on June 7th or any day or any time. No, I did not. You did take a 300 blackout and fired into your wife Maggie, causing her death. Mr. Griffin, I didn't shoot my wife or my son any time. Ever. Murdoch admitting he lied about being at the crime scene in the minutes before the murders, acknowledging that it was his voice in this video. Were you in fact at the kennels at 8.44 p.m. on the night Maggie and Paul were murdered? I was. Did you lie to them by telling them that you were not down at the kennels on that night? Yes. The once prominent South Carolina attorney saying he was paranoid because of his opioid addiction. I wasn't thinking clearly. I don't think I was capable of reason. After Paul shot that video at 8.44 p.m. during a roughly 20-minute window, prosecutors believe he killed his wife and son, then cleaned up and changed clothes before returning to the scene of the murders. I was on the phone with 911, and I was trying to tend to Paul Paul. I was trying to tend to Maggie. His surviving son, Buster, putting his head in his hand, his brother wiping away tears. And when asked about the millions he stole from clients of his law firm. I took money that was not mine. And I shouldn't have done it. How many times have you practiced that answer before your testimony today? Because I've never the same one over and over again. Murdoch's every word now under the microscope. As a legal matter, this is awfully risky for him to do. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. 508, 58 degrees. YouTube is making it easier for people to find their favorite podcasts. We're going to tell you about the new features just ahead. So for the record, no comments. 
Why were employees of this Chinese takeout restaurant hiding from KSAT's Tim Gerber? And what was in their health inspection report that stopped one customer in his tracks? Find out when we go behind the kitchen door. Let's look out there with live cam. If you haven't stepped outside, you will find it a little cooler this morning. Go ahead and grab a jacket or at least a sweater. 58 degrees. We'll be right back. 512, we're back. A Chinese takeout restaurant temporarily shut down for no hot water, but that wasn't the only violation cited by health inspectors last month. When Tim Gerber stopped by this week to ask some questions, the employees hid behind their kitchen door. Quick Walk, located in the 7100 block of Tezzle Road, earned an 85 on their January inspection. The inspector found live crawling insects and dead insects throughout the business. Food in the reach-in cooler was stacked on top of other foods without any protective barriers. Their food permit was expired, there was no food manager on site, and food handler certifications were expired. The business was forced to temporarily close because there was no hot water. Hello, how are you guys doing? I stopped by this week to see if the business had corrected its violations. Can I ask you some questions? But the employees weren't talking. They went off to the back to hide. They even closed the kitchen door. Is that a no? While waiting for them to return, I noticed they hadn't posted their most recent inspection. This one was from last year. So for the record, no comment? As we were leaving, a customer asked about their inspection. After hearing what was in the report, he immediately had second thoughts. Nah, you're, you're gonna pass? No, I'll pass. Okay. <laughs> La Palapa Quetrache in the 1300 block of Kirk Place earned an 80 and a reinspection. The inspector was greeted by an employee's kids running around the restaurant. He then watched an employee use bare hands to grab lettuce. There was no hot water at the hand sink. A cook wasn't wearing a hairnet and other workers were wearing them the wrong way. Dog food containers were being used to store human food. The inspector told them to remove the containers from the business. Legal Eats, located inside the Kadena Reeves Justice Center, earned an 86. The inspector found three live roaches on a pipe in the kitchen, and he found evidence of rodent-chewed plastic, debris, and droppings in several areas. They were told to clean it up and hire pest control services. A tube of roach poison was found on a food storage shelf right above a food prep area. There was no hot water at the hand sink in the kitchen, while another sink had no handles. A missing drip pan from the vent hood resulted in a six inch mound of grease. A reinspection was ordered. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. That's a lot to absorb. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Yes. Thank you, Tim. 515, 58 degrees. Coming up next, Snapchat is rolling out a new sound feature and how it is making it easier to create content. Plus, Google bringing its magic eraser to more people. We'll tell you how you can get access next. <laughs> What would you like? I think we everything is included. Gonna be falling, Did you and your husband enjoy your stay? Yes. Visit secretsresorts.com slash love unlimited for a special love unlimited package and savings up to 40%. For bathroom odors that linger, try Febreze Small Spaces. Just press firmly and it continuously fights odors in the air and on soft surfaces for 45 days. What's the number one retinol brand used most by dermatologists? It's Neutrogena. Rapid wrinkle repair smooths the look of fine lines in one week, deep wrinkles in four, so you can kiss wrinkles goodbye. Neutrogena. 518, welcome back on your Friday morning. Let that soak in for a second. <laughs> yes. That feels nice. Yes. It does that. feel nice. Um, we're tempted to go home, but we have jobs to do. No. Last Friday of the yes. month already. It's yes. Nice to be already? On Friday. Yeah. Yeah, That's March right. 1st March is next week. Next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, ready for March? Is March ready for us? Ooh. Ooh. Good question. Yes. All right, but you know what we're ready for to take a look at that Friday morning commute. Let's get a look around town. Thankfully, not a lot going on out there, guys. As you can see, uh, we have traffic that's picking up just a little bit out there. We're getting closer to 6 a.m. minute by minute, but right now we'd say enjoy your time while you're still inside and get that uh, coffee in. You could see the commute at 1604 Marbach. Yeah, 
a little busy out there, not too bad, but for the most part, we do have plenty of construction to talk about. So really, that's going to be the story on the roadways, at least for right now. You see it right there on the map. Plenty of that construction taking place right there in the downtown area, as always expected, as well as the northwest side and the northeast side. Now, earlier, we told you about the construction that was taking place along Loop 410 at I-35. That's a connecting ramp there, and we're going to see that work continue at least up until tomorrow. Remember, that striping and barrier work, and it begins, or it started on Monday, I should say, and should wrap up portion of it that is on February 25th. Again, that is tomorrow. Nine in the evening to five in the morning is when that work will take place and we will see alternating lane closures along the I-35 southbound connector ramp to loop 410 westbound. So again, uh, you can always head over to KZAT.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there and plan your commute ahead of time, but that work has wrapped up. So let's give you one last peek around town. 10 at ProBent. Uh, yeah, a little bit busier out there, but again, that road work has cleared out, Mike. Sure. All right. Another fantastic picture of the uh, little bit of a celestial phenomenon. Obviously, there is the moon and it's almost at its halfway point. But there is Jupiter and there is Venus. Really cool looking picture. I don't think that was taken around here last night because we had a lot of clouds hanging around here. And we've got a lot of clouds this morning as well. And don't count on seeing any sunshine till maybe Sunday, it looks like. We're gonna be pretty well socked in for the next couple of days. Mid 50s on average, we've actually dropped another degree here in town, and we've got a wind coming in out of the Northeast. That front moved through late yesterday. Didn't clear us out in town as much as <coughs> they're expecting, but we had a lot of uh, sunshine out in portions of the hill country. Wind um, is not overly breezy, not overly gusty. Uh, we do have a couple of gusts here, Rio Medina at 16 miles per hour, so it's not going to be uh, a huge factor. But with temperatures only in the mid 50s later on today, cloud cover, yeah, that wind is going to uh, be somewhat of an influence, if you will. 20% chance for a little sprinkle. It's just one of those don't be surprised if you see something out there later on today, but it's not going to be anything of any significance. 55 later on this afternoon, right around dinner time. And again, computer models, uh, first of all, socked in with clouds. There's the one or two little sprinkles here or there, and that'll be the situation throughout the rest of the afternoon and then uh, going into tonight as well. So as far as the humidity, we it's low right now. It's going to start to creep back on in here over the course of not only this afternoon, but then also going into the weekend. So with this extra humidity, especially trying to come back in here tomorrow morning and Sunday morning, we'll see uh, some morning mist and even a chance for a little bit of fog. It's going to drop briefly by Monday with another front that moves on through here, then come right back into the picture. So not a very uh, long break from the humidity. Other than today, we have some lower stuff as well. So 55 today. 62 tomorrow. So we are going to be staying below normal just for a couple of days. Then back to the 80s by the first part of the week. Another front's going to try and move through here late Thursday into Friday. We'll have more clouds around on Thursday and a chance for a couple of showers and then low temperatures. Uh, tomorrow morning will be the only morning below normal and next Friday close to it. But other than that, very, very mild as we go in through the weekend for low temperatures and the first part of next week. 57 degrees today at noon. Cloudy. Again, a sprinkle is going to be possible today. Not likely at all. 55 then later on this afternoon. So again, that just slow, steady decline of temperatures throughout the day and will continue to drop to the mid 40s tomorrow morning. Make it up to 62. That may be a little tough to do. In fact, getting up to the low 60s tomorrow. Again, a sprinkle here, or there, some morning fog Sunday, and even a shower or two with a few glimpses of sunshine. A front moves through one of those fronts where it only gets hotter in behind, thanks to a brief bit of dry air, and then still 80s midweek. Uh, Weather Service posted an, an interesting image on Facebook uh, in the last 24 hours. It showed the bats coming out in the evening. Oh, yeah. But they got blown off course because of the of the wind, <laughs> wind? last night. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was kind so, of interesting. Yeah, that season, once again, with all the bats up there. Yep. And then even here, the I-35 yep. bridge. Right there, still right the downtown there, area. Really close to us. Thank you, Mike. 523, 58 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. There's pick three, five, eight, seven, fireball one, daily four, three, six, four, four, fireball zero. Cash five numbers are 19, 26, 27, 28, 30. Texas two-step 10, 20, 23, 32, with a bonus ball of 35.
In today's Tech Bites, YouTube taking on Spotify with a new podcast feature. Officials say podcasts will be added to YouTube streaming music service called YouTube Music in the near future. Last year, YouTube hit 80 million subscribers for its music and premium services. Next, new content creation features on Snapchat. One addition to sounds allows users to add licensed song clips, original audio, and other elements to their snaps and stories. Another lets you create videos that are automatically in rhythm with tracks from the sounds library. And finally, Google's AI-powered Magic Eraser can now be used on other Android devices as well as iPhones and iPads for a fee. It's also accessible to anyone who pays for a Google One subscription. The photo editing feature can remove unwanted content from images. Finally, a tool to better edit photos. I wonder why it took so long to develop. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 527, 58 degrees. The U.S. has been lending assistance to the Ukrainian resistance since the war began one year ago. Just ahead, what the U.N. General Assembly is doing now to try to bring an end to the conflict. I will tell you why some popular pizza chains like Papa John's and Domino's are having problems delivering their pizzas to customers. One year ago today, Russia started its unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. Just ahead, what top officials are saying on whether there is any end in sight. Let's look out there with live cam. This afternoon, we won't be seeing the 80s, and right now, actually kind of cool at 58 degrees. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Friday, the 24th of February. Happy Friday. Mm -hmm. Yay. And the uh, temperatures, you know, not too bad today. No, uh, it feels cooler than yesterday. We're down just a couple of degrees, you know, if you do a head-to-head -head comparison. But it is drier. It is breezier out there this morning. And then it's not going to be moving, like you mentioned. No 80s today, no 70s, no 60s. We just stay in the 50s. Temperatures will actually decline a little bit. That uh, that view of the skyline from our live camp down there to the south, you notice how the buildings were fairly distinct. We have got really, really dry air, like I said, in place, but uh, obviously a lot of clouds upstairs. Temperature right now is at 58 degrees, dew points at 39. <coughs> Yesterday, those dew points were well up there in the upper 50s and even low 60s. That's why we had some fog around yesterday. We've got a pretty decent breeze out there this morning. Uh, 54 right now, burning stage, still a couple of 60s out there. Hondo, Uvalde, 63, 62 respectively, and uh, 60 right now at Stinson. Very dry air has moved on in here. That was when that front moved through yesterday. You could feel how the humidity started dropping down in the afternoon, and the northeasterly winds will continue today. Not too much of a, a wind gust out there as of right now, and it won't be overly windy, but just a nice breeze throughout the day. There's a, just still a whole bunch of allergens out there. Of course, the updated count's going to be coming out in just a couple of hours. And uh, I think that's why still sneezing and sniffling from all that. Temperatures stay steady or just slowly kind of trim downward throughout the course of the day. Wind out of the northeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour. A sprinkle or two is possible. Don't get your hopes up for any decent rain. But just don't be surprised if there is a sprinkle. Pretty much the same thing tomorrow. A few degrees warmer. Then it's back to the 80s next week. Details on the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything uh, going on on this Friday, Stephen? Well, Mike, we did have flashing lights out here along State Highway 151 at Loop 410 East, but let's get a wider look at Trans Guide to show you what the conditions look like at this point, because just a few moments ago, we had, saw plenty of flashing lights out there, first responders. Now, things look pretty normal. So uh, this was along 151 as you were heading east toward West Military Drive, and you can see right now, things look quiet, but we're still going to have that labeled on our map here, because just a few moments ago, there was a little bit of a buildup there in the eastbound lanes as you approach West Military Drive. Again, we've labeled that as an incident as we work to get some details, but right now it doesn't look like anything is there at this time. I'll get our friends at Transcat on the phone, find out exactly what is going on out there, but as we give you a wide look at the map, it does look like things are relatively quiet. Now, we did notice that there was a crash that popped up here along uh, 37. We'll find out exactly what's going on and if we can get a view of the Transcat cameras out there, but it does also look like we have a stall vehicle closer to 35 and I believe uh, that is a on the access road. Again, we'll find out more information here in the next few moments or so before right now. Let's get to some of those travel times that journey from Bernie along I 10 eastbound 24 minutes at this hour 26. No need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bolverde along 281 southbound and right now not too awful from New Braunfels 25 minutes to the Alamo City, but let's get it back here on trans guide 151 at loop 410 east. It does look like that situation has cleared up, so that's better news to report. But again, I'll get an update from our friends over at Trans Guide, find out exactly what the conditions were looking like earlier, and uh, we'll keep you updated on all the other issues that may pop up on the roadways. Mark. 
Stephen, thank you. Happening right now on Southeast Military and Goliad, firefighters are putting out the last of a challenging fire at a local business. Alyssa Cole joins us live. And Alyssa, how are things looking out there now? Yes, just like you described, Mark, it's challenging. Let me take a step aside. You can see that fire is still burning pretty bright inside the Easy Pond small business here on Southeast Military, right outside of the HEB grocery store, this shopping center a lot of you are familiar with. And right above, we're just going to pan the camera up. It's a little dark, but there are heavy billows of smoke coming out and it looks like the biggest challenge that firefighters are having right now is this wind it's been consistent they've been out here since two o'clock this morning putting this fire out but that wind has just been consistent and it just keeps that fire burning bright the information that we do have from firefighters so far is that they have had to go defensive we did see them earlier putting the uh, water from above through the roof. But now, of course, since those holes are created because those walls have been knocked down, the roof has been, you know, knocked down, that wind is getting it there in there and it's just keeping the fire burning. So it looks like it's contained for the most part, but again, they're just sort of waiting things out so they can put this fire out safely. Now, Chief, from what we know, he's still out here He's working with crews right now. They're still, like I said, watching this fire, keeping it contained. But right now, there's still questions, and we're still looking for some answers. Because this fire started outside of the building, a lot of us are wondering, was this done on purpose? Are there arson investigators out here? So we're still waiting to get those answers. And as soon as we do, of course, we'll keep you updated on our website at KSAT.com. Reporting live on the south side, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. A warning before this next story, some may find it hard to watch. It was caught on camera. An Edgewood ISD police officer putting his knee on the neck of a teenager. It turns out that officer will not be punished by the district. Officials say in an investigation that it determined that Officer Jonathan Garza did not violate any Edgewood policies during the violent encounter in November. Personnel records obtained by case at Investigate show Garza was dismissed from the Bear County Sheriff's Office in 2021 after throwing a female inmate to the floor while working at the jail. Now, Garza was late, later able to get the termination changed to a voluntary separation and the dishonorable discharge given to him by BCSO was shifted to a general discharge. The district attorney's office rejected two criminal charges filed against Garza, claiming there was insufficient evidence. Edgewood School District officials say they followed all hiring protocols in bringing in Garza on board. Happening today, here's something to keep in mind if you're needing to take advantage of some Bear County services. Starting at noon today, all county offices located in the county downtown complex, including the courthouse, justice center, and human resources office, will close to the public for active shooter training and a mock event. This is by order of the county commissioner's court. No deliveries to these facilities will be accepted that afternoon. Residents are encouraged to conduct any necessary county business before noon today or online at bear.org. The exercise will end later than 5 p.m. County offices will reopen for business Monday during normal business hours. President Joe Biden will participate in a virtual meeting today with G7 leaders and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, among the issues to be discussed, the continuation of support for Ukraine and how to hold the Kremlin responsible for its invasion. Today marks one year since Russia began its unprovoked offensive on Ukraine. In the East, it's very difficult, painful, but we are doing everything to withstand it. As for the South, in some places the situation is quite dangerous, but our troops have the means to respond to the occupiers. The U.S. has been lending assistance to the Ukrainian resistance since the war began. We're going to continue to look at what is necessary and make sure that we provide what is necessary, that Ukraine has what it needs to succeed on the battlefield, so it is the, in the best possible position to secure its sovereignty and territorial integrity. On your border. Symbols of support for Ukraine are also seen across the Atlantic, where some European landmarks, including the European Parliament in Brussels, are lit up in the colors of the Ukrainian flag. 
I want uh, people to unite among us and uh, to unite and uh, basically to fight back this atrocity which is Russia is doing to us. On Thursday, the UN General Assembly approved a resolution that condemns the Russian invasion, calling for a withdrawal of Moscow's troops, with 141 votes in favor, seven against, and 32 abstentions. China, among the abstentions, released a 12-point document on Friday that calls for ending the war and resumptions of peace talks. It's much bigger than Ukraine. This war is actually changing the way we as Europe function and maybe the world functions. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm John Lawrence. North Korea test-fired four strategic cruise missiles during a drill designed to demonstrate its ability to conduct a nuclear counterattack at what it considers hostile forces. The exercise yesterday apparently involved operational strategic cruise missiles, a unit of the Korean People's Army, which fired four missiles towards the sea off the east coast of the Korean Peninsula. The four strategic cruise missiles hit a preset target after traveling about 1,200 miles. After nearly 300 days in a Russian prison, WNBA star Brittany Griner is back playing basketball. Griner worked out last night with members of the NBA's Phoenix Suns since the women's pro basketball season doesn't start until May. Griner officially re-signed with the Phoenix Mercury earlier this week, shortly after her one-year anniversary of being detained in Russia. The 6'9 center last played for the WA's Mercury in 2021. While brutal winter storms across the country sent many people inside this week, that was not the case for a fearless group of surfers in Duluth, Minnesota. Take a look at this. There are only a few days out of the year when conditions are just right for surfable waves on the Great Lakes. According to NOAA, the temperature in the water is a balmy 33 degrees right now. These surfers took advantage of strong winds yesterday, donned wetsuits and taking on Icy Lake Superior in single digit air temperatures. The storms have left millions of Americans under winter weather alerts this week. No, thank you. Mm, yeah, I'm with you on that mm -mm. one. Time now, 540 and 58 degrees for now. If you haven't been very happy with your recent pizza deliveries, you're not alone. Up next, why a couple of popular chains are having problems getting their food to customers. And looking outside with a live cam, thank goodness we don't have those temperatures in Minnesota. We are at 58 degrees, seemingly mild. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headline shares of Domino's Pizza are dropping following persistent problems with deliveries. Stock for the pizza chain plunged about 11% on Thursday. Domino's leaders say in the fourth quarter deliveries at stores open at least a year fell more than 6% compared to the same period last year. They blamed sluggish sales on a shortage of delivery drivers early last year. The company expects the problem to continue this year. With inflation still high, customers might think that delivery fees, which are set by local stores and franchises, just aren't worth it. Now, Domino's is not the only pizza chain with problems. Papa John's stock was down about 7% as well. I get it. I'm doing more takeout than delivery these days myself. Still have some unused gift cards laying around from the holidays. Well, apparently you are not the only one. According to a new survey of more than 1,200 Americans, nearly two-thirds have at least one unspent gift card. Majority of survey respondents said their unredeemed gift cards were worth $200 or less. Credit Summit reports there's as much as $21 billion worth of unused or lost gift cards out there. If you have unused or unwanted gift cards, there are several websites which you can sell, trade, or even donate them. I don't have that problem. No? I use them right away. <laughs> I have a Walmart card with like 33 cents on it, so well, well. anybody's welcome to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, time now, 545 and 58 degrees for now. Speaking of Steven <laughs> and traffic, uh, right now uh, we had some flashing lights out there. Somebody's hazard lights on. That's at 35 and Randolph. I don't expect Steven to have every answer, but we're going to ask him about this situation coming up. Mark had the question and I have the answer here at 35 at Randolph. We have a stall vehicle over here, so let's get a wider look here at Transguide. This is all along the access road, so it doesn't appear that it's impacting uh, the main lanes, but check that out. We have a Texas Hero truck also arriving on the scene, so that's good news. But when you see those flashing lights, you know what to do. Move over, slow down. Remember, this is along 35 northbound. If you're driving toward Randolph Boulevard, you'll see that Texas Hero truck probably for the next few minutes or so, but hopefully in the next few minutes, uh, a little bit later on toward 6 a.m., we'll have a better update out. There. 
out there. Uh, thankfully, the wide view of the metropolitan area just shows plenty of construction. And right now, that is, again, the main headline on the roadway. We're going to see work continue here off of Loop 1604 on the north central side tomorrow, and that's material haul off. So remember, this starts at 8 in the morning, should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. What we'll see out there is the closure of the westbound main lane exit ramp to Lock Hill Selma and Vance Jackson Road. But you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic full list of closures there. But good news here is that those Texas Hero trucks are always on it. The, and you can see them there along the access road helping that driver out. So hopefully uh, the situation will be resolved pretty quickly. But those guys are fantastic. Thank always you. very busy. Thank you yes. for being Stephen on the spot. With Stephen on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a segment. You do have all the answers. So before we go to the um, KSAC Connect picture, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering, since it's been so dry mm -hmm. the past few months now, we've had a little bit of rain, obviously, in, in February. But I wonder what that's going to do with the blue bonnets and all yeah. the you need paintbrush and everything. So. I don't know if that means a bonanza of blue bonnets yeah. or fewer and far between. And I asked that question because here we have, now this was uh, taken over a little bit closer toward Houston, but some wildflowers blooming mm -hmm. along the uh, White Oak Bayou there. So very beautiful. Those are not blue bonnets, are they? Well, you know what? They look, they look kind of like, like are they, they are. Like They're just leaning pur more purple, purple than blue. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the... You know, the way the, the picture was taken. Yeah. And, and there are <laughs> other colors. We've seen yeah. white ones in the past, right, Mike? A purple mm -hmm. bonnet or a white bonnet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, wow. nonetheless. Something. Anyway. But thank you very much. Ed. Great. And it, again, once you start seeing these wildflowers, maybe the flowers in your backyard, send those pictures in there. We love seeing that. Got a lot of, uh, yeah, because a pretty picture is going to be a whole lot better than seeing all these clouds around here. And that's all we're going to be seeing today. Mid-50s. Pretty much average all around the area. Cloud cover, that keeps things pretty steady. East, west, north, south as far as temperatures. Decent breeze out there this morning. Um, 13 mile per hour wind there at Port SA. 10 Rio Medina, 10 at Randolph. A bit of a uh, gust here and there, but not overly windy. Enough of a breeze that you will uh, notice it. Like I said, lots of clouds. Temperatures, I've got 59s on there. We're at 58. We're going to stay basically steady for the next couple of hours and or just continue that slow slide down downward and there's that 20% chance for just a stray sprinkle to pop up here or there. That's going to be the extent of it and will be mid 50s later on this afternoon. Obviously, even lower 50s or even upper 40s in parts of the hill country by later on this afternoon. Here's a satellite picture and yeah, we got lots of clouds hanging around here and once again, we continue with this flow coming in out of the southwest and there's a huge low off the uh, coast of California there. That's the one. I mean, look at all of the rain they've had some drought conditions and now they are getting just feet of snow out there in the mountains which is going to help fill up their reservoirs out there and then up to the north is just ridiculously cold temperatures 27 below zero that's the air temperature in Cutbank, montana right now but as you saw with the flow of the uh, cloud cover that's the the upper level wind flow nothing is pushing all this down in our direction so all this stays up there to the north of us we stay cool today yes yeah, slightly below normal nothing too awfully frigid and then it's just going to be back to the heat after that 57 degrees at noon cloudy again a sprinkle or two here or there and then 55 later on this afternoon tomorrow about the same situation may creep up into the low 60s. That's going to be a little tough to do. We'll start off in the uh, mid 40s and then Sunday back to the 70s. Nowhere near as cool in the morning and about like what it is right now. We are going to be uh, seeing some <coughs> mist and drizzle, some morning fog, especially on Sunday and then clearing out by the first of the week. Thanks to another front and heating up in behind that front with some drier air. Chance of rain other than a sprinkle here or there. Chance of rain. As of right now, late next week. That's about the best we can do. It would be nice after a week of afternoon 80s. Yeah, because, you know, my grass and I cut it last weekend. It's been doing pretty good. And it's like, eh, it's starting to dry out. <laughs> a little bit, so. My girlfriend told me last night she used to mow uh, her backyard. She said, my, my entire yard's like a mullet. It's short in the front and long in the back. <laughs> yeah, a, party, like, a party in the back, I right? Tell you, that's funny. Is. That's how mine looks, too. Yeah, <laughs> I told her I was going to use that today. So there you go, honey. That's funny. Uh, 553, 57 degrees. Watch out, Disney. A new themed land at Universal Studios Hollywood not only lets you visit the world of Super Mario, but play along as well. We're going to get a first look at the new park next. Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood is taking the concept of theme park lands to the next level. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hello. Hi. <laughs> 
There was a worry initially as how is it going to turn out? How is it going to actually translate into the real world? But with the help of the creative folks at Universal, we worked closely to make sure that starting from one block at a time, and as I see it coming together and all the blocks、uh, piling up, it really surprised even myself how how much of a, a reality that this has become and how amazing it is. It was something that we had wanted to do as well, and seeing、uh, a lot of the work that Universal has done and the way. They do、uh, a lot of their creative work. Has really,、uh, we really felt like it was a fit for us, and just seeing it come to realization and seeing it in reality has really、uh, kind of proven itself there. We put a lot of effort into details, both from large attractions like the Mario Kart attraction, all the way down to the single blocks that you can interact with. All of them are opportunities for everyone to participate. That participation comes in a wearable power-up band that tracks your score. And you're in a game. You can get points. You can go meet the great the characters and get、uh, stamps、uh, on on your、uh, app on your app. You can track your progress. And over there on the leaderboard, you can see how you're doing against the best of the day. Leveling up in Hollywood. It's a me, Rick Damagella. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA Google's Magic Eraser is now available, but it comes with a price. How it can help you make the most of your pictures.、And、later, some important news if you're planning on traveling for spring break this year. How you can keep respiratory bugs and viruses at bay so you can get away safely. And later,、uh, heart disease affects over 100 million Americans every year, but Sarah Costa says putting one foot in front of the other. Could make a huge difference. And Stephen is tracking、uh, Transguide for us right now. Zoomed in at I-10 and West Avenue. I don't understand particularly why, but we'll try to find out if there's anything going on out there. I don't see an accident. We'll, we'll talk to Stephen coming up.